What is metabolic flexibility? Now, it's a term that we're hearing more and more, and what I think is really critical and important is that we understand the hormonal regulation with metabolic flexibility. There are estimates that there's only 15% of the population that is metabolically flexible, so we wanna be the outlier. We don't wanna be the normal standard American nowadays that is not nearly as healthy as our grandparents' generation. So what is insulin? It's a hormone actually secreted in the pancreas and impacts every cell in the body to help move glucose from the bloodstream into cells. It's secreted actually in an area of the pancreas called the islets of Langerhans by beta cells. The pancreas plays a key role in balancing blood sugar with another hormone called glucagon. And it becomes problematic when our bodies are unable to actually process the information that is received when we're trying to move blood sugar or move glucose from the bloodstream into cells. This can be the signaling issues that can become problematic can be a sign of insulin resistance. And too often most healthcare providers, and I'm calling you out, don't do a sufficient job identifying patients at the phase when we are insulin resistant and they wait until someone has full-blown diabetes. There are so many missed opportunities with this metabolic inflexibility that it's really becoming rampant and problematic. So let's touch on this again. We are more sensitive to the effects of insulin in the morning and daytime hours versus evening. And this is actually a byproduct, the circadian rhythm impact. What happens when this is dysregulated? Dr. Ben Bickman actually discusses how insulin resistant is the most common health problem in the world. I actually did an incredible podcast with him recently. Please reference that. We went over so much great information. And we know that insulin resistance impacts every single body system, the heart, the brain, our liver, our eyes, the reproductive health, and creates inflammation throughout our body. We know that it ups our risk of specific kinds of cancer, impacts digestion. You may commonly hear things like gastroparesis, which is delayed gastric emptying. It impacts muscle loss, which is sarcopenia. I'd like to give a plug to Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. She talks a lot about how muscle is the organ of longevity. And we know it accelerates aging. It is no bueno. So what can we do? First and foremost, I like to start with baseline labs. Things like fasting insulin, which sometimes can be the first biophysical marker identifying insulin resistance, as well as fasting glucose, hemoglobin A1C, amongst many others. You want your fasting insulin to be ideally between five and seven, but I've seen them in upwards of 17 or even 20. You have to change your diet, plain and simple. Macros should focus on high quality protein and healthy fats. This also helps with satiety. And we know that if you are particularly obese or overweight, you're absolutely positively going to want to focus on limiting your carbohydrates. You want high quality carbs, things like green leafy vegetables. But if you're going to consume carbohydrates, small portions of squash, sweet potatoes, or low glycemic berries are certainly better options than bread, pasta, or sweets. Again, if you have a great deal of weight to lose, you may want to consider a ketogenic diet, which is a very carbohydrate restricted diet. You want to limit things like MSG or monosodium glutinate, which we know in lab animals actually induces to obesity and raises insulin. You want to watch the toxins in your environment, personal care products and foods, because many of these things can be endocrine disruptors and can contribute to insulin resistance. And you want to watch the artificial sugars, even those that have less impact on our insulin like stevia, monk fruit, ethyrotol, etc. And last but not least, you want to consider intermittent fasting if this is the right option for you. Just remember that the more metabolic flexible you are, the less issues you are going to have with obesity, inflammatory disorders, diabetes, hypertension, and fatty liver. Stay tuned for more videos on metabolic flexibility.